everyone. Welcome to episode number 663 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Today, we're diving into a world you can barely see, the world of micromanufacturing. It's the technology that's quietly powering the next generation of everything, from advanced displays to tiny sensors to biomedical devices. But what exactly is it, and who is pushing the boundaries in this space? Well, that's what we're here to find out. My guest is Dr. Patrick Heisler, the CEO of Scrona, a company that is literally shattering world records for microprinting. Dr. Heisler and I chat about how Scrona fits into the micromanufacturing ecosystem, the significant investment that's fueling their growth, the details of InkLogic, the benefits it brings, and where Dr. Heisler sees its evolution heading. And we also discuss the biggest impact Scrona's technology can make, including the key partnerships that are helping them get there. But before we get into all that, did you know that Scrona holds the world's record for the smallest color photo ever printed? It's true. The image is so small, it can fit on a cross section of a single human hair. Wow. All right. Let's bring in Dr. Patrick Heisler, CEO of Scrona. Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So first off, for my audience who may not know, what exactly is micromanufacturing? Well, micromanufacturing is everything in fabrication in the fabrication space that happens on the scale of a micrometer to around 20 micrometer. That's at least how we define it. So think about AI chips that, that need to be interconnected. So these interconnects are happening on the micrometer level, but that's not all. It's also displays the pixels on your smartphone that are on the micrometer level, microfluidic devices for life sciences, for detection of pathogens or other things. That's all happening on the micrometer scale. So Patrick, where does Scrona fit into the picture here? And talk to me a bit about the investment behind the scenes. Well, Scrona offers a completely new path to micromanufacturing, right? So we offer a printing system that's completely digital. Think of it like your, your inkjet printer at home. You put an image in, it prints the image out. Our systems work similarly, but for electronics or for life science applications. So you put an ink in and then you give it a digital file and it prints the ink on, on your substrate, on, on your product, uh, in the file that you give. And that's not only happening in, in 2D, like an inkjet printer at home, printing a picture, but we can print in, in full 3D out of that. So we can print structures. We can print over structures that are already on wafers or on, on other substrates. And that's super important when we think about building up domestic supply chains again in, in microelectronics and in chip manufacturing, because you see how we're talking about front-end fabs that work on the two nanometer and smaller levels. But all of these chips that are coming out of these fabs need later on to be packaged. And here, digital processes that are flexible, that can work on different volumes, that can scale very quickly, are essential. So you don't have to open up large fabs for this, but you can put small-scale investments into fully digital process chains and, and manufacturing plants in place. And that's what we're collecting money for, right? So we've developed that, that technology over 10 years now, uh, so the company is quite established in that sense. And, and that's how deep tech works, right? You need a long time to really develop these kind of processes, these kind of technologies. So we developed it and we've now brought it to the market in a package that's ready for industrial use cases. And now we're raising a new funding round for exactly that, a global rollout where we need to be closer to our customers, where we need to build up a global workforce to support our customers and to support these buildups of, of domestic and, and advanced digital manufacturing lines for microelectronics. 
So what specific markets do you see being transformed by your technology? That's a very good question. So we're all semiconductor guys. So we're looking especially at the semiconductor industry, but we also understand and know that qualification times for semiconductor manufacturing lines tend to be a little bit longer. So you really need to show that you have a reliable process with very major yield rates. So this, this will take a little bit longer time until we see production lines uh, going live with our technology. But on the way to there, we already see huge interest from the consumer electronics space for next generation smartphones, for wearable devices where we can print a lot of electronics on let's say non-flat substrates. For example, for variables, think about very small uh, AR glasses, very light AR glasses or uh, next generation audio devices or similar. And we also see big interest from the display industry because also here we see the shift from uh, LCD to OLED and then from OLED to micro LED, from like rigid to flexible substrates where you need new manufacturing technologies to make this happen. So talk to me specifically about InkLogic and what are the benefits that this scalable digital microfabrication platform brings to the table? When you think about current manufacturing technologies, you have inkjet printing, you have uh, screen printing out there as standard technologies for manufacturing. These come with limitations on the inks. You either need to be uh, very low in viscosity or you need to have very special viscosity properties for screen printing. They come with limitations in terms of resolution. So they limit the whole space of innovation that's possible, either from an ink uh, formulation standpoint. So the ink manufacturers can't do what they want to do because the application then doesn't allow them to, to modify the ink in a certain way or the designers, they are limited in what kind of designs, electronics designs they put onto their devices because the manufacturing technology doesn't allow the, the higher resolutions. So that's, that's the one end. And that's where we're coming in, right? Where our technology allows the use of high viscosity materials for ultra high resolution printing. We can use filler particles inside the inks. So we have this super flexible platform technology, really foundational platform technology that allows the use of all of these different materials or allows new design features in, in these components that are not possible with current technologies. So where do you see the evolution of ink logic headed from here? We're working on pushing the limits on, on what's possible with ink logic, right? So right now we're at a stage where we can print let's say smaller areas, very specific tasks. Um, and we're now pushing towards higher nozzle counts. We're working on the, the combination of different print heads into larger arrays where they work in a coordinated fashion to cover larger areas, to put different materials out of a single array in, in one shot. We're working on next generation software features that really allow customers to tune in the process parameters on the fly very quickly that have in situ health monitoring and, and adjustments inside the print heads available. So there's still plenty of work for us to do. We're working on making that really customer friendly. So a fully digital process, which you expect today, right? You, you expect it from your smartphones, you expect it from your, your computers, your tablets. And we want to bring that to industrial production lines where you dial your process in and then the, the system takes care of the rest with advanced uh, machine learning and AI algorithms that, that take care of the, the process parameter and the process health. Okay, so where do you see Scrona technology making the biggest impact in the future? We're looking really at the semiconductor space right now because that's where we're coming from. Uh, but we also see a lot of interest from life science applications, for example. We're working on printing micro ceramics. So, so micro ceramic gears are, are one example of uh, potential use cases for implants and other, other things. Uh, we're also seeing the deposition of uh, molecules with micrometer precision in life science application as a potential use case. We're seeing quantum compute as 
a future use case where we can print very special materials that some of our partners already develop um, to come up in the in the future. So we are really at the forefront of technologies and where the current manufacturing technologies reach their boundaries and their, their limitations. That's where we are coming in and are disrupting that space. So talk to me a little bit about your partnerships and who you are collaborating with. Yeah, so we, we are working with quite a number of companies uh, along the value chain. So we're starting with the universities that are developing and research institutes that are developing the next generation of uh, industrial processes with their, their customers or their ideas, essentially. And then we're working with the machine integrators, right? So we have machine integrators as partners in Korea that we can't uh, openly talk about. But we're also working with companies like Notion Systems in Germany or NSW Automation coming out of the inkjet and uh, ultra high resolution dispensing space to get that technology into the market. On the other hand, we're also working with the ink manufacturers who were collaborating with companies like Henkel, Electron Inks, uh, Tayo on solder masks, adhesives, conductive inks um, to really work on the, the full value chain to bring that into the market. And then we're working with the end customers to teach them what's possible with our technology that they also can design it into their next generation product. Excellent. All right. Before I let you go, it is time for your off the cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? Uh, I think I would take uh, fresh Japanese sushi right now. Very good answer. I love that. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Patrick. Amelia, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Can you believe this is the last Fish Fry podcast episode for 2025? In this year's season, I have covered a wide array of groundbreaking topics, from cutting-edge AI developments to space technology to sustainable engineering and open-source challenges. Do I have favorite episodes? Well, yes, of course. It's kind of like having a favorite child, but not the same. <laughs> so... My favorite episode of the whole year was my recent fish fry special edition called Have Your Cake and Eat the Batteries Too. In this episode, I explored how mushrooms can function as organic memory devices. The details of Robo Cake, a multi tiered dessert featuring various edible components and the world's first rechargeable edible battery and how NASA developed Fogponics technology can help you grow vegetables right in your own home. Another of my favorite episodes this year was my discussion with Toronto Talks podcast host Ash Amin, who joined me to discuss his unique experience with his AI co-host Sophie the Sage and shared his vision for AI's evolving role in podcasting. If you're a fan of Fish Fry, you will know that I have a special place in my heart for anything space-related. <laughs> and this year, Kenneth O'Neill from AMD gave me an in-depth look at implementing AI applications in space and highlighted how devices like the Versal XQR are facilitating a significant leap forward in onboard processing for space missions. I'm also really interested about how we can solve power consumption and resource management issues. And this theme definitely included my favorite episode with Angelo Dragone and Paul McIntyre from the Slack National Accelerator Laboratory. In this episode, they provided insights into the lab's mission, the development of next generation microelectronics, and the critical work being done at their new Meerkat Microelectronics 
Energy Efficiency Research Center for Advanced Technologies to reduce power consumption. Along with this theme would also be another favorite episode of mine, a conversation with Larry Richenstein, founder and CEO of WePower. Larry and I chatted about their innovative energy harvesting technology and its broad industrial applications. In this episode, I also explored Forest 4.0, an intelligent forest data processing model leveraging IoT, AI, and blockchain for sustainable resource accounting and transparent forest governance. And last but certainly not least, I find open source development to be a fascinating subject. And in the episode called The Power of Open Source, Solving Our Toughest Technical Challenges, Julie Shen and engineering leader Tim Jurovich from Deloitte and I chat all about the current obstacles facing open source developers, effective strategies for navigation, and where the open source road is headed in the coming years. And if you would like to check out any or all of these episodes, I've included a slew of links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. And I have also included more information about Scrona as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of December 19th, 2025. I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.